I just have to say, Yasmin deserves a prize for managing to have a headshot that prominently features a fluffy dog. <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> so, next we have Yasmin Imran Al Sous. She was born and raised in Jerusalem, uh, Israel. Uh, she studied both chemistry and chemical and biological engineering at the University of Pennsylvania. She completed her PhD in Princeton and is now a postdoc here in Adam Martin's lab over by Glorious Building 68. And when asked what drew her into a career in research, she gave this really fun logic of searching for the dream job. She said, well, as a child, she thought she wanted to be a detective because she really liked investigating. And then as she got a little older, she was like, I think it's a lawyer because she could argue on about convictions and findings that she had discovered. And the great thing about science is it allows her to combine both of those wonderful aspects. And so, without further ado, Yasmin. Thank you. So if you stop someone on the street randomly and ask them what they have in common with a fruit fly, they might not come up with much. But if you ask a biologist, they might come up with an endless list of items. And one of those will be how females develop their eggs. And so truly, we now know that from fruit fly to mouse to frog to human, eggs don't develop in isolation as a single cell. Rather, they develop within groups or clusters of cells where the other cell's job is to help that egg develop so that it's ready for fertilization and is ready to support the life of a future embryo. And so when we say it takes a village to raise a child, that's actually true from the very, very beginning. And so I study how these clusters develop in the female fruit fly. This is a very powerful experimental system with the added advantage that the cells grow in these very highly organized clusters of exactly 16 cells, 15 of which are called nurse cells because as their name implies, they nurse the future egg. And so at a critical step in their development, the 15 cells transport everything they have, uh, proteins, nutrients, organelles, mRNA, into that one cell. They undergo cell death and are cleared from the cluster to make a single cell that contains everything that the future embryo needs to survive. And so this process has been studied extensively because people are always interested in understanding, well, what triggers cell death? And how do you clear away cell corpses? But what we recently decided to do is to look at this process in real time. And using very high resolution imaging, what we found is that this process is not passive. The cells don't just transport their material, but it's very active. So if you look at any one of those cells, of those 15 nurse cells, you'll see that they undergo these wave-like contractions that are associated with squeezing the fluid from one cell to the other until it reaches the future egg. What's more is we found that these contractions are coordinated, and it's very easy to understand why that would be important. So if you think of a fire brigade where you're trying to pass buckets of water from one person to the other, you need some kind of coordination so that you're not passing buckets from left to right and right to left, but that they're going from A to Z but you also need to also transport buckets to people whose hands are free. And what we found is that something very similar is happening in these clusters. So cells closer to the future egg pump and transport their material into the egg first, followed by the ones that are further away, and so on and so forth. And so clearly this process is very important for understanding fertility in this context, but it's also helping us to understand very basic questions in biology, such as how do individual cells coordinate their interactions to bring about proper tissue level behaviors um, from embryonic development and all the way into adulthood. Thank you. 